World-class sprinting ability is a product of exceptional coordination. It means the right muscles fire and relax at the right time, and the limbs move in the proper directions. Many sprinters still believe running fast is all about getting stronger. They want to put a bigger engine in the car. That is a good idea, but a muscle car is useless if the driver confuses the gas and brake pedals. Driving with the brake will get you nowhere and damage the car along the way. Similarly, inefficient running mechanics will slow you down and potentially hurt the body. The nervous system is the most critical contributor to speed because it is responsible for every movement in the body. The best sprinters are not those who are the strongest and the most explosive. The fastest people are those with the best coordination and the highest quality of movement. Interestingly, we can usually identify a good sprinter by a static picture. The picture displays the body position and relative joint angles. Small differences in joint angles in a specific running phase can get a sprinter faster or slower. The average sprinter usually spends about 50% of the race in contact with the ground, which is about 5.5 seconds for an 11 second sprinter. In comparison, Usain Bolt's ground contact time was less than 4 seconds during his world record performance. Every sprinter wants to spend the least time on the ground, but short contact time means nothing without applied force, so the sprinter should push quickly and very hard. At high speed, in the upright position, the lower leg muscles fire most powerfully and quickly if they are preloaded into a moderate stretch before ground contact. Thus, the lower leg becomes a stiffer spring, producing more vertical force, along with longer strides and higher frequency. This way, the best sprinters take advantage of elastic recoil from tendons to reduce the time they spend on the ground in order to increase speed. When the sprinter touches down, proper alignment of the head, spine, and hips, all the way down to the feet, will transfer spring-like force into the ground without energy leaks. Just as blocks that are well stacked can resist gravity from pulling them down, the upright sprinter has the advantage since he can hold his running form with minimum muscular effort. By contrast, a forward lean will negate all the strength and power in the hips as the bent knee will absorb the applied force rather than return it. The sprinter will lose speed and spend twice as much energy doing so. In the latter part of the race, the more downward force the sprinter applies, the faster he can run. And that's why the fastest athletes have their knees together at touchdown. They make a very short and powerful downward push, which facilitates a quicker forward leg swing. When a sprinter reaches top speed, he can't do more, rather than relax and trust his form. Still, in big finals, people tend to overdo things. They apply force much longer than necessary, turning the effort into a horizontal push. This leads to excessive backside leg mechanics, inappropriate forward lean, and loss of speed. In sprinting, the gas pedal becomes the brake if you push for too long. The human body is extremely adaptable. It will literally do whatever you ask of it. The nervous system can be programmed much like a computer to do the impossible. Because the mind controls the body, and the mind is unlimited.